So today is the 25th of March. Currently, I am recording at 5.30 in the evening. So when I woke up this afternoon, I got the news that the government is issuing another two more weeks. Extended two weeks of the quarantine lockdown period. So it's supposed to end um, by the 31st of March, which is the next Tuesday. And now it's going to be extended all the way until the 14th of April. As you know, I'm Carmen. I'm a speech and language therapist. I am currently in my home in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Today's video, this video is going to be mainly for you guys as parents. In this kind of situation, screen time, YouTube video, phone games, computer games are also quite unavoidable even though you know when you go to a pediatrician they always tell you to reduce your screen time when you go to um, when you pass by any talks or whatsoever people will keep telling you you know not, not so much YouTube video is not good um, for a child's development in general but I know and I understand that it's really unavoidable so I have decided to create this video to go through with you how to use technology, applications, phone games, all the videos that you watch to basically interact with your child, to encourage your child to interact with you and to keep that social communication. Social communication is basically what your child has every single day when they go to school, play groups, or kids gym during the weekends. I just hope that we don't waste this precious time because kids grow up very quickly. They are supposed to develop very quickly as well. I will also guide you how to interrupt your child when he or she is watching a YouTube video very intently. Like, without making them feel angry or frustrated. So the, the ultimate goal is to keep the social communication thing going on, number one. Number two is basically to give you an idea of what you can do, what other things you can do with your kid at home. So parents, stay strong. Let's do this. Step one, parents, adults, control the device. Do not give your child the device. Do not let them hold it. The moment you have the control, automatically they will come to you and they have no choice but to engage with you. Whether they want to request from you, whether they want to reject you. Let's go through the first category of applications that I feel it's quite general out there, which is puzzles or applications that includes games for matching and puzzle-like kind of activities. So for the first category, I would like to pull out probably this one, Animal Puzzle. As you can see, I have disabled the music. So for those of you who have children or kids who are easier to be distracted, you know, they have quite short attention span, especially for very, very young children, like one, two, three years old. You probably might want to turn off the music because it can get a little distracting. I would let the sound button on because there are sound effects as you click on things in the application, which make the whole activity the more interesting. For example, let's say if I click onto this, that it comes out like animal puzzles. So it's up to you whether you want to choose a duck or a sheep. Usually I would um, go through like the animals with the kids first. So for example, I would say, oh look, this is a sheep. And this is a cow. A cow goes moo. And this is a a chicken or a hen, the hen says, you can just stop there and let your child fill in the blank instead of asking your child, you know, what does the hen say? All right, so now let's choose what animal do you want. Do you want a chick or do you want a cat or do you want a dog? Give like a couple of choices, not too many, or else your child will get very distracted, like three animals that is on the screen would be sufficient. So for example, if your child say, oh, um, I want to take a look at the chicken. So let's go for chicken. All right. Let's go for 
chicken or rooster. It's really up to you. You don't have to necessarily um, follow the app. You can name it yourself. If let's say you feel certain names are too difficult for your child. Okay, so we're going to tap onto rooster. With puzzle activities, usually I would do a few goals. For example, we can do turn taking. For example, now, mommy go first. I am going to put the eyes. Always tell your child what you're doing, what he or she is doing. So you keep that conversation going. Now, mommy is done. It's your turn. So you give the child the phone. Don't give the child the phone, sorry. Give the child the screen. So you hover again. Let's say he's going to take the butt. Oh, you're going to take the feet, the tail. Once it's done, okay, done. Your turn is up now. Who's turn next? Mommy's turn next. So, you know, you get that going. And once it's done, you go back to commenting or describing. Yeah, and you say, look, that's the chicken. The chicken is red. So the bubbles are like a reinforcer. Look, tap many, many bubbles. So you go tap, 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 pop, 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 all the bubbles. So it's, it's a very engaging activity. Another category of applications that is out there are very categorical, meaning there's an app that teaches colors and shapes and numbers and sizes and so on and so forth. So I am going to go for numbers. There is a series of games by this similar character called Baby Panda. You can find um, teaching of numbers, teaching of colors, as well as teaching of daily routines. As you can see, the color is really vibrant. They have really interesting music and sound effects. We can tap play. And again, you can choose to increase your music if you feel that your kid will be entertained by it or you can choose to just mute it altogether in case your child has very short attention span and he or she is very easily distracted you might want to emphasize on the number four so you count one two three four one two three four once the corn have grown you can keep counting let's tap on one corn, one corn, two corn, three corn, four corn. Keep commenting, keep counting with your child, and then give your child a turn to count as well. As you can see, there's a number here, number four, and there's four holes for your child to count again. Remember, this is number four. Can we start counting? Before you put the corn in, Start counting first with your child. Let's count together. Hold your child's finger and go over together. Okay? So what you want to do, you hold your child's finger and we tap together. One, two, three, four. Give your child's turn again. Tap on the hole and don't say anything. Wait to see if your child says anything. If not, you start counting for your child, okay? We go one, and then number two, you just keep quiet. Shh, mommy quiet. To see if your child does, you know, fill in the blanks and say two, three, four. If he or she doesn't, you go ahead and do again. Say one, two, and shh, wait for your child. The trick here is to demonstrate one time, and then the second round, you just wait. So this is also a visual reinforcement. If you turn on the sound, there will be some fireworks. There will be some hooray, which is very, very, very interesting and rewarding for any kids out there. Mind you, the intonation could differ from parent to parent. You don't have to imitate my, my intonation like, oh, read Apple, you don't have to do that. But with children, I would encourage a variation of tone. Um, very different from when you are talking with adults, like, like this current tone that I'm using in my videos. It would be good to have an excitable tone or a sad tone, like, like a variation of tones when you're talking with your kids or teaching your kids to keep things interesting. So um, you have them go color, 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 oh you color the red, good job, good coloring red. So they know like, oh this is red, this is also red, let's pick red. 
Red, 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 red! Yay! When your child is doing something on the app, you just sit there. Don't leave your child alone with the device. Hold it for them and comment. Keep talking. Green ball, very good. Green, green, green. Green balloon, green, 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 green. That is how we teach new concepts. Color, shape, sizes is the same method usually. We, we give them a lot of things that are green color, a lot of things that are red color. So a lot of matching going on so they know that, oh, this is red, this is also red, this is also red. Practice makes perfect. Another type of application would be, this is my favorite, daily routines, applications that is related to your child's daily life. One of the companies that I like is Toka or Baby Panda. So parents take control of the device, number two. <gasps> Look, the girl is pointing at the tissue. She's done poo-pooing or she's done pee-peeing. Let's grab the tissue for the girl. Can we do that? Then we give it. For this category, you can talk about, you know, brushing teeth, you can talk about going to the toilet, going to the dentist, going to the doctors. I like to use all these kind of activities, especially for the ones that is um, about going to the dentist or doctor, to prep the kids before they go for the actual doctor's appointment so they don't get too scared or worried because they find fun in the games that they've played which is quite similar i would say to the real life situation not that similar but to them they kind of ha have a feel of what to expect in terms of going to the doctors and the dentist it can be quite scary for little kids so you might want to download this kind of applications to prep your child i've managed to find it's about hair salon i'm gonna tap on play and I'm pretty sure again they have music and sound. Probably let's turn up the sound. Yep, there is some sound effect of cutting. So you might want to hover a little bit and let your child listen to the sound so that they know what to expect when they go to the actual hair salon. So there is a, a girl sitting in the hair salon. So this is what you're going to be telling your kid. Or your child, what to expect? Oh look, the girl is sitting on the chair. She's in the hair salon. How do we know? We can see scissors. We can see the comb. We can see a shaver. You might want to describe a little bit what is going on in the hair salon. So now that he ha she has very long hair, let's give control to your child now. Okay, you might want to say like, Let's try to cut her hair. Her hair is so long. She has long hair. And then for the mummies out there or for the daddies out there who have long hair, please again relate it to real life. Show it to them that you have long hair too or your child has long hair too and it's probably time to cut their hair. So let's go over to the scissors and we cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut. Can you hear the sound effect? For those who have kids that are very sensitive to sound, you might want to let them hear this first and explain to them, oh, that's the sound of the scissors cutting. Cut, 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 cut. And then for those who have, let's grow the hair again and then we shave it off. For the boys, if let's say you have boys that are very sensitive to sound, you might want to expose them to the sound. Let me turn up the volume. Do this a few times and desensitize your kids um, sensitivity to sounds that they are not familiar with so that when you go to the actual hair salon, things will get less scarier for your kid and hence probably making your um, hair salon trip a little bit more easier for you and less stressful for both for you and your kids. As this goes on, the app will tell you what to do, what to do next. Your child might or might not be able to catch the instruction. Instead of that, they would rely a lot on the visual cue. So that would be bouncing pictures, what's next to do. Main reason why I want parents to control and parents to comment is because I want the child to listen 
to the words instead of relying on visual help, relying on picture. You can include some questions and some commenting in these kind of activities, but mainly this goal, the goal is to get your child to listen, not to look for instructions. Um, it's going to be a skill that is heavily demanded, especially when they go back to school and teachers give a lot of instructions. They need to be able to follow the instructions. Let's go through the YouTube video. There must be a specific thing that they are looking for. For example, let's talk about... I'm a bit outdated right now, but I do know Baby Shark it used to be a very famous song. So when the songs are playing, um. When the nursery songs or any interesting songs are playing, again, go back to my steps. Mommy, control the device, number one. Number two, step two, parents comment, tell story about what is going on. So for example, here you can see the child is doing some um, action. So baby shark, do 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 And you pause. Come, let's do baby shark. Baby shark, do 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 And then what's next? Mommy is next. Let's play the video. And then mommy shark. And then you pause the video, and then you ask your child, let's do together a mummy shark. Once done, you get that engagement going on, and then you play the video again, then we go to daddy shark. Then once they finish daddy shark, pause the video, and then you do daddy shark with your child. So it's a pause play, pause play kind of thing, so that you don't see your child doing this. All the time. You want your child to do this. That engagement with you, with the app, with you, with the app, with you, with the app. So you are teaching your child to be able to divide their attention properly. Even though they have like a super interesting thing in front of them, they are able to pay attention to humans, to people, when they give instructions, when they give um, story time, when they give a reaction, you know, you get that engagement going on. Ultimately, that's the goal. You and your child doing something together for the most of the time. It's not easy because I know that um, we adults, we have our own things to do, we have to work from home and all, but just try. We start small, let's try five minutes today and then the next day we go 10 minutes and then the next day we go 15 minutes and then the next go, we keep increasing five minutes. Hopefully you are able to do it and see some changes get the interaction going, get your child and uh, you talking more, you know, conversing more instead of the question, answer, question, answer kind of thing. And yeah, all the best. Good luck. Stay strong, stay safe, everybody. Hopefully we can get through these tough times together. And if you need any other clarifications or information on how to use technology with your kids, you can comment below. Like and subscribe if you like this content. I will be sharing more. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>